Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are looking at the evolution of computing. Your cloud service provider has all of these offerings, and the idea is that you need to choose the one that meets your use case. A lot of times this all has to come around the utilization of space. That's what we're trying to illustrate here in this section here, and the trade-offs of why you might want to use some of these offerings, okay? For dedicated, we're talking about a, uh, a, physically, uh, a physical server wholly utilized by a single customer. That's considered single tenant. And uh, for Google Cloud, we're talking about um, single node clusters and bare metal machines where you have control of the virtualization. So you can install any kind of hypervisor or virtualization you want in the system. The trade off here, though, is that you have to guess upfront what your capacity is going to be. And you're never going to 100% utilize that machine because it's going to have to be a bit under in case the utilization goes up. That's you choosing the CPUs and the memories. You're going to end up overpaying because you're, uh, you'll have under uh, underutilized server. Uh, it's not going to be easy to vertically scale. It's not like you can just say resize it because the machine you have is what you have, right? You can't add more. I mean, I suppose they can insert more memory for you, but that's a manual migration. Uh, so it's very difficult. Um, and replacing the server is also very difficult, okay? So you're limited by the host operating system. It's not virtualized, so whatever is on there is on there. Um, and that's what your apps are gonna have access to. Uh, if you decide to run more than one app, which is not a good practice for these kind of machines, uh, you're going to end up with uh, resource sharing where one machine might utilize more than the others. Technically, with a dedicated machine, you have a guarantee of security, privacy, and full utility of the underlying resources. I put an asterisk there because Yes, it's more secure, but be, uh, but it's up to you to make sure that it's more secure. So you have, that's up to your skills of security, right? Whereas if you had a virtual machine or anything above that, there's more responsibility on the cloud service provider to just provide a secure machine and they can do a better job than you. So why would you use a dedicated machine? Well, maybe you're doing high performance computing where you need these machines like very close together and you have to choose what kind of virtualization you need to have, okay? So then we're looking at virtual machines. The idea here is you can run a machine within a machine. The way that works is we have a hypervisor. This is a, a software layer that lets you run the virtual machines. Uh, and the idea here is now it's multi-tenant. You can share the cost with multiple customers. You're paying for a fraction of the server. Uh, you'll still end up overpaying for the underutilized virtual machine because a virtual machine is just like, you have to still say how many v vCPUs, how much memory, and your app is, you know, you don't want an app that uses 100%, right? You want to use exactly the amount you need, but you can see here, you know, there's still going to be some underutilization. Uh, uh, you are limited by the guest operating system, now, but now it's virtualized, so at least it's very easy to uh, uh, possibly migrate away. If you choose to run uh, more than one app on a virtual machine, it, it can still run into resource sharing conflicts. Uh, it's easier to export or import images for migration. It's easier to vertically or horizontally scale, okay? And virtual machines are the most common and popular offering for compute because people are just very comfortable with those. Then you have containers. And the idea is you have a virtual machine running uh, these things called containers. The way they do that is similar to a hypervisor, but instead you have, um, like here is a Docker daemon. So it's just a, um, a container uh, software layer, okay, to run those containers. There's different kinds. Docker is the most popular. Uh, and the great thing is you can maximize the, uh, the, the capacity because you can easily add new containers, resize those containers, use up the rest of the space. It's a lot more flexible, okay? Uh, your containers will share the same underlying OS, but they are more efficient than multiple VMs. Uh, multiple apps can run side by side without being limited uh, by the same OS requirements and not cause conflicts during resource sharing. So containers are really good, but you know the trade-off is there are a lot more work to maintain. Then you have functions. And functions go an even step further. And the idea is that you uh, the the containers where we where we talked about that's a lot of work to maintain. Now the uh, cloud service provider is taking care of those containers generally. Sometimes not. It depends if it's serverless or not. But the idea is that you don't even think about and this is called serverless compute. But you don't even think about uh, the OS or anything. You just know that what your runtime is. You run Ruby or Python or Node, and you just upload your code and you just say. Uh, I want this to be able to run uh, uh, for this long uh, and use this amount of memory, okay? You're only responsible for your code and data, nothing else. It's very cost effective. You only pay for the time the code is running uh, and uh, VMs only run when there is code to be executed. But because of that, uh, there is this concept of cold starts. And this is uh, where the virtual machine has to spin up 
And so sometimes requests can be a bit slow. So there's a bit of trade off there, but functions or serverless compute is generally one of the best offerings as of today. Uh, but more, most people are still getting kind of comfortable with that paradigm, okay?